Okay, so raw devices. Heavily used, used a lot in the field, but you need to understand how they work, and the book's just a little shy on that, right? So to truly understand, though, how a raw device mapping works, you have to compare it to how VMFS works. So we're going to start with a discussion of how VMFS works. So let's say I've got my ESX host. I've got a virtual machine running here. I've got my SAN enclosure. I've got a VMFS volume out here. So I've got everything, all the components necessary, right, for my environment. What is a virtual machine? It's a file. Is that files? Name some of the types of files. VMDK, that's the one I'm going for. Sure, you got the last one first. Thanks a lot. Right, so we got the VMX file for configuration, got log files. But what we're talking about here is just that's the VMDK file, right? So we got a VMDK file. A lot of times we don't really think about what that is. The reality is to this virtual machine, he thinks he's got a local disk. He thinks that he has a local SCSI disk. And when you turn him on, when you create that VMDK, he lays down his own format on that virtual disk. The reality is, right, that's a, a disk out here on the, on the sand someplace. He sees it as a disk. So when he does his NTFS format or whatever, he creates, and I'm going to simplify this a little bit, but he creates his block table so he knows where things are located, right, and all the other pieces that go with that, right? <coughs> when he makes a disk call to that virtual disk, they say, to him, it's a local SCSI call. So he looks at his block table and says, somebody needs file whatever, I need blocks five and six. He creates a SCSI call. We catch that call and pass it to our disk subsystem. The first thing our disk subsystem does is it looks at this EMDK file, and this thing is actually two pieces. There's a resource fork and a data fork. The resource fork, well, the data fork, we'll that first. That's where the actual data is, right? So that's the big file. The little file is a resource fork. That tells this guy where that file is located. So in this case, let's just say it's on a fiber channel SAM and on one one. So that's, I only have one here, right? And so he says, okay, I gotta pass this then to my fiber channel subset. Because fiber channel is where it's at. Cool with that? Okay. So he passes it to the fiber channel subset. He takes that command, gives it to him. Another thing to be aware of here is to us, to VMware, a virtual machine is not Windows. It's a process. Right? So this guy's got a process ID, uh, maybe he's process 47, who knows. To us, that's really all he is. It's just like any other thread of work to do. Inside there is where all the, the action happens. We just see it as you know, another process running on our, our kernel. Right? So we, say, we see down here that process 47 is asking for the, uh, the SCSI or blocks 5 and 6 on his MDK. We have a translation table here that says when he asks for blocks five and six, the reality is on the big block table we have for this volume, that could be blocks 90 and 91, right? So the first thing that the fiber channel system has to do is translate this SCSI command into the real blocks on the device. Go with that. Then he encapsulates this in the fiber channel protocol suite and passes it to the SAN who does its activity, reads, writes, whatever it is I'm trying to accomplish. Make sense? Cool. That's our preferred mechanism for disk use in a virtual infrastructure, a VMware virtual infrastructure. Right? That's a best practice published in our design class. Preferred mechanism is to use VMFS. It is, however, not the only mechanism. Right? So, We'll talk about NFS later. Right now we're talking about these raw device mappings. It's another mechanism for organizing disk. Before we talk about the mechanism, let's talk about when you use it. So there are three things that might drive you away from our preferred mechanism to a raw device mapping. Right? The first is some application that you need to use. For instance, the prime example we always give is Microsoft Clustered Services. The quorum disk has to be formatted NTFS. This lock table has to be accurate to the actual disk. Right? That's just part of requirements of, of their cluster services. There are other applications. I don't have any examples off the top of my head, though, that might make direct calls to the block table in, in an effort to save time or be more efficient. 
those applications might need a raw device mapping so that this block table is indeed accurate. Okay? So some application. Another thing that might drive you there is some technology, more specifically SAN technologies. For instance, if you want to do SAN replication, a lot of SAN replication doesn't play well with VMFS. Okay? Um, some of the SAN, uh, uh, SAN uh, deduplication processes don't play well with VMFS. Okay? So that's when we talk to your SAN vendor and say, can I do this process if it's VMFS? If so, cool, that's the way you want to go. If not, okay, now i got to have another option. Okay. And then the last one is just plain old convenience. If I walk into an environment, a big one, like, like General Mills or something like that, right, and they got the big EMC or NetApp uh, SAN in place, and all their physical, physical boxes already have their data on the SAN, well, I walk into Virtualize, I got two choices, right? I could convert every one of those ones that they currently have formatted NTFS or ext 3 I could convert them into a file on a new one, Terabytes after terabytes after terabytes. I'm going to be, well, as a consultant, I'm going to be happy, right? Because I got tons of hourly. I'm booked for the summer just converting disks. Or I might say, you know what, the hell with that. I'm just going to use it the way it is, right? So it might be inconvenient to make a major switch. We probably would still tell you in the long run, as you upgrade those, those new EVMs or whatever, it might not be a bad idea to convert them. Yeah. We have customers that live on RDMs long term, so it's not, not a, a bad thing. Right, so those three things. There's one other thing that might drive you towards an RDM, and I, I always write it really small. Read it. Misinformation. Right? You do a search out on the web for VM, VMware and RDMs, you're going to get 10 bazillion hits. Half of them will say that RDMs perform better than VMFS. Half of them will say RDMs suck. Right? Depends on which hits you, you read. It probably might help you form your opinion. So it might be a little misinformation. Um, as you're going to see here, uh, mechanically, there is no difference in performance between the two, right? So this stuff might have a better performance one way or the other, right? But mechanically, there really is not. All right, so kind of know what might drive us there. Now let's look at how this thing works. So when I create a raw device mapping, I still create a VMDK file. But instead of being a pre-allocated space, that VMDK file is strictly a pointer to a one that is formatted something other than VMFS. So it might be formatted, let's just say NTFS, because I don't Windows game, right? And so this file becomes basically a pointer to a one. Cool with that? Right? As far as he's concerned, the VM, though, it's still a local SCSI disk. So he reads and writes from it just as normal when he, when he formats it. Uh, in this case, he actually is formatting it, NTFS, right? So when he sees that disk, his block table that he keeps is accurate, right? Because it is the block table. And so when he, but he still sees it in local SCSI, so he still says, hey, I need to, to, to read uh, SCSI blocks 10 and 12, right? If we still catch that command, the disk subsystem still reads the location. It goes, oops, just a pointer. Passes, but it's pointer to the fiber channel SAN, so it passes to the fiber channel subsystem. Who then says, um, where is that? Oh, that's just a pointer. So I don't have a translation table. That's the one step that doesn't happen here. Right? So he says that, that request then is valid as written. So all I have to do is encapsulate it in the fiber channel protocol and pass it to the SAN and it's a direct physical call. Does that make sense? The difference between the two is that block level control has moved from us to the VM. Cool with that? And again, one of these three things might drive you there.